Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to wrap up the composition unit with looking at the most complex calculation you have to do, and that's determining the molecular formula of a covalent compound given the percent composition information. Now this is just a little bit trickier than the other way, but I don't, I don't think you're going to struggle too much with this. Just really one step farther than the other type. And so as we've talked about before, there are two types of formula. Well, more than two, but the two we're worried about right now are empirical formulas, and that's the smallest whole number ratio of atoms. And that makes a lot of sense for ionic compounds, because remember, uh, a crystal lattice is made up of a lot of ions in all different directions, and so we're going to find the lowest ratio of those ions. So, like for instance, table salt is not, is not just Na and Cl. It's a lot of Na's and a lot of Cl, but it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And so when we're talking about ionic compounds, it makes an awful lot of sense to use an empirical formula, the lowest ratio. But for covalent compounds, since each molecule is discrete, you actually can wind up with ratios of elements that are not reduced to the lowest ratio. And uh, an example of this could be uh, these three compounds right here. Oh, uh, well, here we go. Hold on a sec. Here comes some. There we are. And so what we have there is actually on the top, that's formaldehyde. In the middle, that's acetic acid. And at the bottom, that's glucose. Now, if you look at the ratio of the elements in there, all three of them have the same ratio. It's one carbon to two hydrogens to one oxygen. So they would all have the same empirical formula. But the, uh, the molecular formulas of the last two do not match the empirical formulas. And so when we're dealing with covalent compounds, We've got, to, we've got to come up with some way to uh, work with the fact that many of our compounds are going to have ratios that have not reduced to one to one ratios uh, that are higher, like glucose C6H12O6. And so to deal with that, uh, we have to uh, um, uh, do a little bit of mathematical magic. Not much, just a little tweak over the last ones. So anyway, that's formaldehyde, acetic acid, and glucose. They all have the same empirical formula, as we, as we noted. But they're certainly not the same thing. And so that's why when we have covalent compounds, we don't name them by the empirical formulas because that would be giving us misinformation. And so how do we deal with this? So let's look at this mathematically. Again, we're looking at mainly the same thing as, as we did for determining empirical formulas. We're still going to have to determine the empirical formula just like we did before, and we'll walk through that again. Um, uh, the way that you can help distinguish these problems, though, is they have to give you a molar mass of the actual compound or, or a range around the molar mass. If they, can't, if they don't give you that, then you can't determine the uh, molecular formula. So that's a big red flag. You, you, know, you should definitely see one of those in a problem like this. So anyway, uh, then what we're going to do is you're going to determine the molar mass of the empirical formula. And it's going to feel like you're going backwards, but you're not. Because then what you're going to do is you're going to compare the molar mass of the empirical formula with the molar mass that you were given. And then you can determine what I call the X factor. And the X factor is really simply the ratio of the two. Uh, you're going to compare the molar mass that you were given to the molar mass that was determined. If they're the same, then it actually is the same thing. The empirical formula is the molecular formula. But if they're not the same, then it's going to be some ratio. And all you do is take the uh, X factor and multiply that out by the subscripts to get to the actual ratio of the subscripts. And I'll show you what that means in a problem here right after these guys have some of their last witty dialogue together. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at one of these problems. All right, so a compound's found out to be 78.14% boron, and the rest is hydrogen. The molar mass, there's a red flag, ding, 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 is around 27.7 grams per mole. What's the molecular formula? Now, I will say that there are definitely more than one way to uh, solve this problem. Uh, I'm going to show you the way that builds off the technique I've already taught in the last couple lessons, but there, you know, there are certainly other ways to get to the answer here. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take our percent, turn it into grams, pretend we have 100 grams of the stuff. And even though they don't give us the percent of hydrogen, we can use addition's tricky friend, subtraction, to figure out the grams of hydrogen in a 100 gram sample. And so what we're going to do there is we're going to turn both the grams into moles like we typically, typically have done, not typically have done. Uh, so we end up with 7.228 moles to 21.6 moles. Again, you don't have to worry too much about sig figs in a problem like this because you're going to find a ratio anyway. 
I divided both by the smallest ratio. I ended up to a 1 to 2.99 ratio. So I can feel pretty good that the ratio is going to be a 1 boron to 3 hydrogens. Now, in a typical empirical formula problem, we'd be done. But now what we have to do is we have to see if that empirical formula is the right one. And the way we do that is now we figure out the molar mass. And again, it's going to feel like you're going backwards. Uh, but you're going to then figure out the molar mass of that. So there's some practice with that. It's going to be 10 plus 3. So you end up with a molar mass of 13 for BH3. Now, obviously, 13 does not match 27, and so hence we find our X factor. So in this case, our X factor is going to simply be how many times does 13.8 go into 27, and it ends up being surprise 2. And so that 2 is the X factor, uh, which means that it's no longer BH3. It would be B2H6. And that's it. That's the last complex skill of composition math. Uh, you can now figure out molar masses. You can figure out uh, percent compositions for molar masses. You can figure out empirical formulas from percent compositions. And finally, you can even figure out molecular formulas for covalent compounds from percent composition given a molar mass. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this unit on composition mathematics. Uh, keep studying your chemistry. Thanks for watching. And uh, have a great day.